Welcome to Watercolor with Viv. Today I am going to be showing you a Christmas chickadee. Now the first thing we want to do is wet the background. Once you get your drawing made, of course, wet the background. Then mix up some cobalt blue and a little bit of raw sienna. Not too much raw sienna because you don't want it to turn green on you. And then you'll just use the tip of your brush to tap that color over the wet, the wet areas that you've painted. Make sure you leave some white spots because we want to have a little cloud. We want to give it a little atmosphere, make it look a little cloudy. We want it to look a little wintry. So um, we don't want it solid. We want to just randomly uh, put in that color. And again, that is cobalt blue with a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm just darkening up some areas, just whatever pleases you in your painting. That's where you could darken it up. Um, we're going to do the same thing underneath the branch here. We're going to put clear water on. And then we're going to put that mixture that we did above the branch. Now here you can see that above the branch is already starting to dry some. We're going to come under the branch with clear water. Then mix up the um, raw sienna and cobalt blue. And we're going to drop it in. And you notice that it looks a lot darker than above the branch and the difference is above the branch is already drying off it's almost finished drying and this is fresh and wet so you can see clearly that the um what the difference is between what the paint looks dry and what it looks like wet so you can see it dries a lot lighter and a lot paler you want to just continue to do the same thing underneath the branch as you did behind the bird Leave in white spaces. Don't paint the shapes solid. You'll just put the clear water in, wet on wet, and drop in the mixture of raw sienna and cobalt blue. And just put it where it looks right to you. I mean, what I mean by that is put the darker areas and leave some whiter areas where it looks right to you. Now I'm going to wet his side of his chest. We're going to do a little raw sienna in there. Just clear water. I know it, look, it doesn't look as clear as it should be. My water's a little dirty. Then you'll just put in some raw sienna. Just like we did the background, leave some areas white for the highlights. Use the very tip of your brush and make little fringy marks so that it looks like feathers are overlapping onto from his chest onto his little side belly. And um, just kind of randomly where you think it would be darker leaving in some light areas for the highlights and to give it a little bit of form. You'll have to have darks and lights to make your form. Then I'm going to take, um, I think, a little bit of, yes, burnt umber and put it in there, avoiding the whites, the little white marks that I've left. And just to um, give it some more shadow there. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. We're going to wet it first, a little bit of raw sienna, and just let it flow. Now I'm going to bring it down across the bottom of his belly, but I'm adding water so that it'll lighten it up as I pull it down. I'm adding more water so that by the time I get down to the net, the other side, it's really pale. Now we're going to do his little cap, the little chickadee's cap. You're going to cover it with a little clear water. And then we're going to mix um, indigo blue with a little bit of burnt umber and a touch of alizarin crimson. Now we're going to see how that looks and see if I like it first. But again, we're going to just do a little bit of clear water. And then we're going to take that mixture and just drop it in. Look at your reference and see where the dark areas are and that's where you want to drop it in. And make sure that you leave some light areas for the highlights. Just use the tip of your brush to blend it. If you want it darker, you just keep adding into the areas that you want darker. Just touch the tip of your brush, pick up your paint and keep touching the tip of your brush and letting the water do the work, letting it flow out. and hitting those shadow areas where you want it to be darker. 
when it dries. And I'm just taking the tip of my brush and just indicating a little bit of texture there and putting a little shadow there. Now we're going to do the tail. Now with the tail I didn't add the alizarin crimson so it looks a little bit more bluer but what I'm going to do to unify the little head cap and the tail is at the end I'm going to do a wash of the um, mixture that I've done on his tail and chest and I'm going to take that wash and put it over his head and that will unify his head, his chest, and his tail color since they look so different. And again the chest is the same way that we've been doing the whole thing. Clear water and then we're dropping in the indigo and burnt umber mixture. And we're just kind of letting it flow. Um, there is some masking fluid there so that's where those are the little white spots you can see through where even though I paint over the tip of them with my brush that it doesn't actually paint it because there's masking fluid there there's masking fluid in the highlight of his eye and we'll remove that later on during the painting but for right now it's staying and I just want to let you know that's what was happening there there's some masking fluid now this is the same mixture but it is really thick not that much water for his eye um, and there is a little dot of masking fluid in in his eye where his highlight would be and I'm painting around that and when we remove it it'll be white under there and I'm just darkening up some areas that I think need to be darker and his little side tail feathers we just want those to be pale gray So, I, of course, I wet them and then just use the same mixture of the chest, but with a lot of water mixed in. Now we're going to do his wings, the top of his wings, and his stack of feathers under the top of his wings. I'm just wetting that down. And then we're going to add the same mixture that we did for head and tail and chest, but without the um, alizarin crimson. The, the head had the alizarin crimson in it. The tail and chest are indigo blue and burnt umber. And while it's wet, I'm just going to start spreading that mixture down, remembering not to make it a solid line and to add some um, feathery lines, some feathery marks to make it look like feathers. And going up into the white area with the tip of my brush to make it look like fringes and feathers. And darkening it where it needs to be darkened for the shadows and I'm doing all of this while it's still relatively wet and mixing in the areas with the very tip of my brush where it needs to be mixed in Now we're going to do the stacked feathers of the wings and in there you can see that I have some masking fluid there and that's why the paint is resisting. It's not bleeding into those areas. It looks like little stripes. But later on, like I said, we will remove the masking fluid and I'll show you what we're going to do then. Now I'm going to go around his little eye and put his eyelid in with a really thick mixture of the indigo and the burnt umber. And I'm just making his little eyelid and his under eyelid. And if you notice, I'm leaving a little white space between his eye and his eyelid. And I'm going to go back later in there once this dries and put a little bit of the raw sienna in there. Now I'm taking the very tip of my brush and I'm using my number two brush for this, this the smallest brush that I have. And I'm just drawing little lines just randomly in there, but I'm making sure they go the direction that his feathers grow, but I'm making them different lengths, different sizes, different thicknesses, so that it'll look natural, because if you just do little rows of them, it, it doesn't look natural. And um, I'm not going to draw every feather on his head, but I like to do this just to give it an indication that he has feathers. And the lighter areas, I don't put as much feather work as much little lines and um, I use a more watery mixture in the lighter areas.
And I'm just going to continue to do that over his head until I'm pretty well satisfied with it. Later on, when I put that mixture of um, indigo and burnt umber over it to unify it with the tail and the chest, it'll blend it all in, soften it up, and it'll look really pretty. And I'm just going to do a little more shadow work here. Uh, it's starting to dry, and I, I wasn't happy with it, so I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. It's, it's my painting, and I can do that. <laughs> Just like it's your painting when you paint, and you can do that. Now we're just going to add his other little side feathers. You can't really see them as well. They're more of a pale, watery, gray mixture of the indigo and the um, burnt umber. So we want that to be more watery. It's further away from us. And I'm also using the same mixture just to add some shadow, some little shadows, little lines to make it look like he's fuzzy and fluffy. Then we're just going to put in more shadows on his wings, give him a little bit more definition. Now I'm removing the um, masking fluid, and I'm using a rubber cement pickup tool. It's just a hard rubber square. We've got it removed, and now um, I'm just going to add in some of the black mixture, gray mixture. It's really indigo and burnt umber mixture, and just to some areas where I feel like the masking fluid made it didn't it covered too much so i'm going back in and just going around adding a little bit of um little tiny lines little tick marks where the masking fluid was because it just looks like white blobs and i want it to look more natural so by just making a few little lines a few little fringy lines it makes it look like more feather like and it's not just unnatural white blobs going across his chest. So I'm going to do continue to do that as we work along and darken up some areas of his chest. And fill in a little bit of those um, marks that were made with the masking fluid. The masking fluid was a little blobby looking. It's too, too many big white spots on him so we're going to just take the brush a number two brush and make tiny little lines and make it look more natural now i'm just darkening up his feathers a little bit more and then i'm going to come back in and start separating where the masking fluid was i'm going to draw or paint some line work just some lines and that will indicate where the feathers are separated and give it a little bit more realistic look so that it's not just big white bars and right away it just starts looking like I'm adding feathers just by making lines with that dark color into the into the white mat where the white where the masking fluid left the white areas doggone that was a lot to spit out and it's starting to look more like wing feathers stacked on top of each other as i'm adding the little lines and adding a few shadows here and there as i go just tiny shadows it that variation in color really goes a long way to make it look more, a little more realistic. Even though we're not going for perfect realism, but it looks more like a bird, I would say. Just adding a little bit of shadows on his side tail there, his side bars of his tail. And I'm just taking clear water and going over some of the, the white feathers so that they're not quite so bright and don't stick out as much. Plus, they're underneath the other feathers, so they need to be a little darker for the shadow. The leg, you don't have to get crazy with the leg. Um, we're not trying to do an Audubon-worthy painting. It's just a Christmas card, so the leg is the same um, gray mixture. Just the pale gray, really watery first. Let it dry, and then come back in with the darker gray where, where the shadows are. And then just take the tip of your brush and blend it 
out onto the um, lighter gray. On this area, we're just going to take the raw sienna and just put a few, um, a little bit of brushwork in there and leave it. Next, we're going to go into his beak and just make a little bit more dimension there. Separate his beak so that you can see he's got an upper and lower. Now, in this little white area, we just add the same burnt sienna type thing and just add a few shadows. And there you have it. So, stay tuned for part two, which will be the berries and the leaves. Thanks for watching.